Hello everyone, Jeff here. So this is my favorite aquarium. It's my 30 gallon planted live bearer community tank. And it just so happens to be the greatest aquarium in the world. And if you're wondering by what standards, my standards, because I'm the judge, I'm making the decision. That's because I have a red one, I have a yellow one, I have a blue one, I have a black one. It's friggin' awesome. But the reason why I'm showing this tank today is because I am conceding to the fact that I have failed with my banana plant. And that's it right there that the this female dwarf gourami is hovering over. You can see the tubers, which should be green, are all brown, and now it has what I believe to be black beard algae on it. Some of you may know, um, I showed this plant several times in the past when you know, I got it from Aquarium Co-op. And when I got it, I think it had four leaves. And, you know, I know this plant, if it grows well and healthy, it'll grow like lily-type leaves, like, you know, that'll go up to the surface. Um, but it never got going for me. All it was doing at first was, you know, other leaves would die off, and then it would sprout a new leaf, but it would only do that one at a time. Just one leaf replacing another one that would die, and it would I was doing that for a while and then it just stopped growing any leaves at all and then it got brown and I just, I probably, you know, I mean, I know I should have pulled it out a while ago because now I think this is where I first saw any kind of black beard algae so it started growing on that and since, like you can see this, this is a root, a java fern root, you know, coming off. A java fern that's like on these rocks here so there's like black beard algae now growing on that check out the zebra nerite snail right there that's the only nerite snail i have in this tank so it's you know take a look at it while it's right there and i can find it but then i that black beard algae so there's more over here on this more java fern roots and some right there on that leaf and you can see some on the tips of these cryptocorn lutea and there's even some now some in here in the java moss Yeah, there's an example right up here. But yeah, so unfortunately, this banana plant didn't ever got going. Um, it was a while back. Don't I've placed se several orders from Aquarium Co-op for different things, but only once did I order plants from them. Another time, I bought the that banana plant and some pearl weed and that's actually the very last of the pearl weed just one tiny little speck that's left like that never got going either but even like at the time I actually intended to buy a dwarf aquarium lily but they were sold out so I ended up getting the banana plant instead but I never got going so I'm Gonna pull it out now. Mm. 
this isn't the greatest tool you know with this plastic piece um, ugh, there's some yucky tubers underneath it I didn't even notice that but I have since actually bought a you know a stainless steel um, tweezer thing online when I get that when I receive it I'll probably make a video of it all right so that mess so I have this container here because I'm going to do something with it I'm going to try a little experiment actually looking at this maybe if I should get some more light on it looking at this on from the other sides like that area that was exposed that it's all kind of grimy with hair algae if I flip this over this doesn't look too bad the rest of it maybe it can be salvaged I don't know if it's entirely dead but let's see so what I was going to try was an experiment on the black beard algae. So I have this Aquarium Co-op Easy Carbon. You know, from what I understand, this is essentially the Aquarium Co-op version of Seachem Excel, and that is basically, well, as it says on this. Um, label it's an algae inhibitor I bought this because I use it at, to try to attempt to get the hair algae under control in my 10 gallon guppy endler hybrid tank um, but what I noticed was my guppy grass died after starting using this instead of the hair algae so I you know I stopped using it because of that I haven't used it since but you know right I mean based on that I've decided I, I'm not gonna use it like squirt it into any of my tanks you know maybe at some point when I learn more about it and I might try it again but right now I feel that it is harmful to more delicate plants and I don't want to do any harm to any of my plants I'd rather, I mean, I'd rather endure algae than to harm other plants trying to handle the algae. Well, anyway, so I'm going to try this and just squirt some in here and see if that takes, you know, gets rid of the, that hair algae. And what I also have heard is that this can be harmful if it touches your skin. So I'm kind of paranoid about that. So I'm going to, I don't have any plastic gloves. So I'm going to just have my hand inside this bag. And squirt some in here. So just in case it splashes, my hands will be protected. So I'm gonna squirt some in here. All right, there's a couple squirts. And then I have this little, you know, makeup brush. A while back, I when I first got back into the aquarium hobby, and I was watching other videos and trying to learn some things, I saw somebody had like little paint brushes that they use to when they clean their aquarium they would like use it to brush off algae so I went to the 99 cent store trying to find some paint brushes and I couldn't find any but then I found like a, a makeup kit thing and so I'm like oh well I mean I can do you know that's essentially like a paintbrush so um, 
you know, when I did that and I tried to brush off algae, like I have in my, that green algae that was on the Anubius leaves in my, my 10 gallon Guppy Endler hybrid tank, that's the one with the hair algae. It, you know, that algae is like too, you know, attached to that, like just brushing it wasn't enough to get it off. So, I mean, I haven't used this brush for anything since then. And by the way, I did get some, what I did decide to do in that 10 gallon tank was get some Amano shrimp that I bought from Flip Aquatics. So there'll be a, you know, up here, a link to the video where I got the Amano shrimp. And so, all right. So did some squirts in here. So I'm just gonna kinda brush it on. Well, just kinda move this around in it. Later I'll probably, I'll do this more when I have two hands and can see better looking directly at it instead of through my camera phone. But yeah, so I'm gonna see, you know, I don't know how immediate or that works or whatever, but yeah. So I'll check on that tomorrow, see how that looks. But yeah, so it's a shame I couldn't get the banana plant going. And it's also a shame, oh, I should turn that light up back off. It's also a shame that the pearl weed never got going either. Um, why that is, I don't know exactly, but I think part of it had to do with, you know, I mean, there wasn't really any other room to put it, so I ended up just putting it up here, but this is where a lot of the current from the, the Aquaclear 50 to, comes down right here. So I think being like a delicate plant, I think water current has is a factor in that. And this, ha you know, it's a stem plant, but it's a really thin, delicate stems. So that combined with, you know, in the corridors would come around and bump into it and I think that affected that affected it as well as you know I have Ricky affluitans up here some you know it does this tank evolves you know with plants and that when I do oil change and I'll remove some and I kind of do you know I had some anacris like holding it in place and now it's just you know, loose like that, but this would block the light. So that could have been a factor, like it wasn't getting enough light. Um, another factor could be that perhaps it wasn't getting enough like nutrients. I did go for a stretch. You know, I do add aquarium co-op easy green fertilizer in this tank, but I did go a stretch where I wasn't adding any fertilizer because I was trying to get the nitrates dialed in where it wouldn't get too high because I, you know, all these fish, I have to feed the tank a lot. So I was doing, you know, I initially started doing water changes once a week and I've upped that to multiple times a week. And now I'm back to, you know, doing it multiple times a week, I'm back to adding fertilizer again and then you know there might be some I usually do that after I do a water change once a week and then sometimes I would forget to squirt in some fertilizer after doing water change so that could be a factor and could be com you know with all these other plants in here that could be competing against it and getting the nutrients before the pl that um, pearl weed does so perhaps if it was, you know, a single species plant in a tank, it might do better than with all these plants. Another possibility could be allelopathy or allelopathy or however you say it, A-L-L-E-L-O-P-A-T-H-Y. That's a, the concept of, you know, plants that, that can emit 
chemicals that can be harmful to other competing plants or have you heard Pectec describe it as a plant's another plant's poisonous farts can harm another plant so you know that I'm not saying it is but you know that could be a possibility among all the other possibilities or it could be a perfect combination of some of those possibilities you know maybe not one by itself but multiple factors combined could be the reason but um, yeah I never got um, proly going in here unfortunately and that doesn't mean I'm never gonna get proly again because I do want to try it again you know I might try it up in another tank in the future with less other plants in different conditions so yeah So I wanted to take that out, so I'm going to be doing, I'm about to do a water change on this. And I think it's time to pull out some more Java moss. Because this is shading the plants underneath and getting, spreading out too far. I want to try to keep it contained to here, so I might pull out like half of this. Yeah. And yeah, so that's it for now. Oh yeah, um, as I meant, not that's not it for now. I just want a little more rambling. Um, so I did mention I got a mono shrimp in my ten gallon tank. So they have pretty much taking been taken care of like what I believe was green spot algae, and there's still hair algae in there. So, but my plan is to move some of those mono shrimp into here once that they get the hair algae cleaned up in there so maybe they will you know be able to clean up some of this black bearded algae that I'm now experiencing okay so all right after 